Hey everyone, welcome and thank you for joining me today. My name is Marlene and I am with our Room to Boom. So I have a lot going on kind of um, in my heart that I thought I would share just because, again, if I am experiencing this, this is going on in the collective. I know that I am not alone in this. So just in some experiences that I was having this morning, um, what a vision came to me and the vision was of have you ever seen one of these it's kind of like a saucer that you stand on and in the center of it is a ball so if you get on it the, the idea is to hold your balance right it's it's can be a toy for kids I think they make like exercise stuff that's kind of similar to that right so so the idea is that one, when we ourself lose our balance in life, right? We feel we're just not not um, fully in balance, right? Um, so there could be all these compensating factors or, or all these areas of life, pardon me, in which we feel uh, out of balance. We might feel totally in balance in certain areas of our life. And then, um, or we feel very in balance in our life, but then we have an experience um, that throws us off balance. That experience can look like, um, you know, things that are going on in your relationship, any relationship, right? Uh, whether that be marriage, partnership, um, with your family members, friends, um, that can be uh, things that are related to your job. It can be comments from people. It can be um, either what people do or don't do, right? So we can feel out of balance for so many reasons. But it feels great when we feel very in balance because we recognize when we don't feel in balance or we can cover that up, sugarcoat it, right? Maybe all of a sudden we have... Uh, if we just, for instance, talk about the four bodies, right? The emotional body, the physical body, the spiritual body, and the mental body. Um, and so let's say we got three of those, just really we feel very imbalanced, but we have one that feels um, out of alignment. All of a sudden we had an experience that threw us out of alignment. And so we're putting a lot of thought into that. Where did that come from? Felt very out of left field. Um, and then there can be, and then all of a sudden we're out of balance there. And then another thing can go out of balance because what we're trying to do is we are trying to make up for this. Now, don't mind my uh, drawing here, but this actually is, <laughs> this is very quick, right? So it's just that thing where we're trying to, we keep trying to get things in balance, right? But what do we do? We overcompensate oftentimes, right? We think, oh, if I just move over here, if I just shift over here, that thing just keeps doing this. And, and oftentimes we feel like we fall off of, of it, right? Off track. We fall out, out of track um, from what is in alignment with our soul. So, um, it, you know, it can very much be a challenge. Um, it, it's reminding me also like... Um, so let's speak of emotions and like the idea of a of a pendulum um if your emotions are running really high right um so one day they can swing this way and then another day they can go this way right and the ideal goal here to find that balance is that the the emotions aren't running so high in one direction or the other we have more of a calmness right going on Yes, we start to see everything, we're feeling it. Very much when that pendulum is swinging like one direction or the other very high, we, we're very much in our emotions. But when we can bring ourselves into balance and hold ourselves through all of that, we feel more in alignment, like if the pendulum is just kind of standing still, right? So um, um, I the question that I want to pose is in what areas of your life right now are you possibly overcompensating first of all let's take a look at in what areas of your life do you feel out of balance right or is there just a situation or a conversation that came up a backhanded comment 
Um, it could be anything to do with, you know, work, right? Again, is there something that has thrown you out of balance? And what is that? And oftentimes when one thing throws you out of balance, you're so busy trying to get back in balance, other things can start going out of balance. So the first thing is, is we really have to become aware of what it is that has thrown us out of balance. So this is self-awareness, right? And this is then tuning into how we feel about the experience or whatever threw us out of balance. And then we have to ask ourselves, have I been trying to overcompensate so it continues to just feel like you can't get your balance, right? And so in what ways is that, um, is that happening, right? And then, um, so that's, that's kind of what I just wanted to touch on because again, if I'm feeling that where, um, and what's, what's interesting is, <laughs> you know, you can say you're not feeling it in your own life. Like I'm, I'm, anyone on the outside of you is reflecting something back to you about yourself, right? So if I'm having an experience and I'm witnessing something or trying to help someone and that's what it feels like that I'm trying to help pull someone back into balance but it takes a lot of self-discovery to realize you can't pull anyone back into balance but yourself right um, sometimes like if you take a look at like scales right and the word I had written down the word tipping the scales right sometimes we have to recognize what is in our own scales what is the weight that we are carrying around and we have to start letting go of that which is heavy or setting us off balance right we have to learn and we have to look at what is that we have to just understand what is it it's self-awareness um, that is throwing us out of balance um, one moment here oh someone <laughs> just went by and said good morning but they kept on moving Anyway, um, so we have to be self-aware of that. Okay, so, um, you know, are we trying to overcompensate to help someone else get back into balance? Are we perceived that they need to be in a certain space or a certain alignment, right? And they have their own soul lessons. It can get complicated when you, say, are in a family or you are in a household and you're trying to move through that experience, right? Um, because you don't get to just get up and walk away all the time, right? But when you do and you bring self-love in, all of a sudden the other stuff does start fixing itself, okay? So um, just really, really taking a look at that. Are you feeling like things are kind of topsy-turvy? Are you feeling like you're on one of these things? And if you ever, it's really interesting because you know how that is. You watch a video, then something will come up and then it's like, so then maybe I'll go to a store and there'll be like a toy like that. If you try to get on it and see how you feel, like if you can get on it, you can balance right away. That's going to be indicative of how you are really feeling. But if you are struggling to hold your balance it really does ask you you it um i'm sorry it encourages you to ask yourself so what areas of my life am i feeling out of balance because if we just keep avoiding it and keep playing right um then that's what we'll keep doing but if we want to heal we'll start doing the work We'll start doing the hard work, the shadow work, the inner work, the realizing where there are where there is pain, where there are hurts, where there is stuff to move through and to heal, right? And the other thing I wanted to talk on is, um, again, um, if you've been watching my channel, I started watching The Chosen probably, um, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. And so I'm on... Um, the third series and it's really interesting and I tell you there are moments that it just it just was so incredibly moving to me um, 
one when um, I, I can't say all the characters' names, but when Jesus was speaking with um, oh one of the Roman guards, and he said, "Yeah, people aren't going to like if they don't like it now. They're really not going to like it. Like they're going to get real uncomfortable, right?" And basically, he wasn't here to make things pretty and make things nice. He was here to help the the sick, the meek, the poor, the uh, orphaned children, the elderly, right? And to do better by those that were suffering, right? And, you know, just as I speak on this, I'm getting goosebumps and very emotional about it because, you know, we can go through our life thinking we've got everything and then all of a sudden our rug is pulled out from up under us and it takes situations like this for us to really feel what others are feeling, are going through, are sensing, right? But, you know, there was other parts like, um, I, uh, last, or not last night, the night before I had watched the part where he was preparing for the Sermon on the Mount and it was really so moving and then he did that and now his, um, disciples he's sending out right now two by two all over the world to start to start speaking his messages and to heal others right and so you know this just really um you know one of the things that i really loved about that is that like it just really brought life to these characters even though i haven't read the full bible like you get like you know the, the pieces and the this and that if you haven't read it but um, it just really brought the characters to life, their their humanness, right? Their, you know, the their fears, their worries, their minor disagreements, their um, their own pain and anguish, their own suffering, you know, and showing how um, we all can be in that position, right? And I love that he just chose people that were going through it right and that we're wanting to rise above which is another word I wrote here to rise above what they had been living before right um, they wanted to level up and I like this rise above right ascending they wanted to level up they don't want to play um, small they want to rise up and help others rise up they want to get to that top of that mountain, right, victoriously. And so, you know, that came up and it was just like, okay, so here I am and I do these videos and I speak on things all different ways and I don't, um, I've been, I've used the Bible a little bit, um, but it's really interesting. I found that God speaks to me in ways that I can comprehend or understand. It's like our own language, right? Um, and so I really, like, I just think it's amazing, right? And so wherever you are at on your journey, if if you just open your heart, right, a little bit, and if you just start to trust and you have some faith and you ask God for signs, um, you can ask your angels, your spirit team, right, for signs and help and guidance, and you start to see it. I mean, uh, I... I don't want to misquote it, but I know there was, it's like, blessed are those who have faith without, like, like being proven or something like that without actually seeing. And so I, I, I don't know, I might be saying it wrong, but, but it's like, yes, if you have blind faith, that's really amazing. But then things start happening and more and more people, it's like, you cannot deny how prevalent God is in our life when you start becoming aware right we start slowing down and um it's really quite quite amazing and quite beautiful and so um again um god speaks to me in the way that i can understand and i also believe that um that the way that i present videos and such is so that i can reach others who might have been where i was because i didn't have that background right who um who just are going through something and I speak words that actually resonate with you 
and touch your soul so that you start thinking, geez, you know, maybe there is something more to this, right? And like, um, you know, asking yourself, are you closing God out or are you giving God a chance, right? So it's really interesting. I'm, I'm outside and um, as I came out here and I was just setting some things up, um, a car went by, you know, a few of them, just like really, not like right by me, but out, you know, I could hear them from the highway, like really revving their engines or in the neighborhood. And that's like, um, there is spirit in those who don't want me to inspire others that do that right and and yet it's like Jesus said things are gonna get rough when he was talking to his disciples he said you know yep it's been tough now but this is why we need you this is why we need you because there's gonna be more there's gonna be more um, oh I can't say the word like kind of pushback right so when we are here inspiring others, there will be others who will want to push back because they prefer the dark agenda, the heaviness, the oppression, right? Um, because they prefer the control and keeping people in fear, but that doesn't work for me. Um, and so I, I'm here, right? It doesn't work for me to do that. And yet, and yet, it's funny because like even as a parent, <laughs> you know, we we walk these paths and it's like sometimes you're trying every tactic you can, you know, from conversations to being kind and nice and then pretty soon you're negotiating and next thing you're angry and the next thing you're this, right? So you go through all these gamut of emotions, but you start to learn. And this isn't just in parenting, right? But you know, it can be in any relationship. But eventually you start learning and then it's like you start realizing or like what is this all happening for? Why is this happening? Because we're here evolving our soul to um, learn lessons, to help others along the way. Okay. And <clears throat> so these are just some things I wanted to touch on. I know the video is at 17 minutes, but I do want to start out with a reading. Um, today I picked up a book. And I really, <laughs> this book is so cute. Um, it says, When Action Follows Your Heart by Susan Spencer. And there were some really nice little, um, oh, little things in here. And I, I didn't mark any of them down. I just want to ask Spirit to show us a message that would be helpful for the collective today. And this is about taking action. Um, because we can wallow in our own suffering and or pain. But when we take action and we help another, it amazingly helps lift us up too, right? So what would you like to show us here for the collective? Okay, I, I have July 27th as one of the dates. It says, donate gently used work clothes to dress for success. Yes, I love this. <laughs> um, I sold real estate for many, many years. And, and I just thought when I heard of that program, it was like so... It's really a neat program, and if you're unfamiliar with it, I'm not a specialist in it, but basically what they do is they help women who are going through things to um, get back on their feet to find work when they have, you know, for whatever reason, maybe they haven't worked, so they might have training, but this is about helping them find some interview outfits, and then I think... I. If I'm not mistaken, I believe they get like three interview outfits to look for work once they've had training. And then after that, then they can come and pick out like five outfits for, um, after they have a job, like five different outfits for um, their new work, right? So whatever, whatever type of work they find, right? And so that's really a lovely way if you have access and you are looking for a way to help others, that's a lovely way to do that. Um, the other one, July 28th, says, help elderly folks remove their luggage from the baggage claim carousel or give them a hand lifting their bags into the overhead bin, right? So just a lovely little act of kindness that you can do um, anytime you are traveling, 
Um, of course, that can be as simple as groceries, right? Just, just helping others who, um, could, you know, maybe whose muscles aren't quite as strong as they once were, right? So, um, I did get this new deck called Angels and Ancestors Oracle Cards by Kyle Gray yesterday. I've used it three, uh, two times, I think. I want to use it again because I'm definitely resonating with it. Uh, I do want to show you that on the bottom of the deck, we have Guardian Angel, you are not alone. Okay, so um, I, I just did a video on this. I happened to be at an event um, a couple weekends ago and in, I was out on a pontoon and in the um, shield of the captain's seat, I noticed that there was a white feather that had fallen very far down, okay? On, on that, the very next day on, at um, the event, I found four white feathers. You know, so like on this journey, I was just like, I was just so incredibly moved. Oh, and then, here, hold on, I have to, have to grab it. Don't mind my stuff in the background here. And then I was dropping someone off, and they took a walk around for a minute, and they came back with this feather. And, um... Oh, yeah, that was the other thing that was kind of funny. Um, at this place we were staying, they had angel soft toilet paper, which, of course, had feathers on it on top of it, white feathers. So it was just this weekend of that. So there is that message that you are not alone in trusting that. So when you are seeing feathers, you are getting messages, okay? I'm just going to um, ask that Spirit show us a message that would be helpful here for the collective. Um, one of the things that I also wanted to mention is like Jesus said, his disciples said, well, what are we going to say when we go out? Like they were worried. Well, we don't know how to heal people. We don't um, know what to say, right? Because they they held, held him in such high regard, right? And he said, just say anything I've spoken to you. So, you know, you'll see that I'm going to be bringing more of that forth because I feel like it's important, but in combination with this, because that doesn't resonate with everyone immediately, right? So we want to tap into messages to where you are at on your journey. This is not about pushing stuff on you, but I, I share with you the experiences that I have and am having, right? Okay, so I had one fall out. I haven't even looked at it yet. Let's see. Okay, drum. Dream and journey. A really pretty card. I'm going to just show it to you, and then I'm going to tap into the book on this one. Oh, actually, it's actually the same drum that's on the other side of the card. Okay. Um, let me just go a little bit further. I'm going to take the cards, and then I'll tap into it. So... I'm going to take five of these, kind of as what's going on with the energy here. I get the feeling to, you know, marching to the beat of your own drum, right? And so it's kind of like Jesus was, you know, um, you know, he was just simply in connection with d the divine, right? You know, uh, <laughs> right? Um, divine moving, moving through him, right? Got, you know, <laughs> what? What is the word? Uh, Emmanuel, right? Okay, what's the next one here? Okay. Shaolin Master, and it says, Be graceful in movement and action. Now, what I like about this is he's holding this grasshopper, and the day before, might have even been yesterday, I got this deck, and I came home, and a grasshopper, like, kept hopping like with me and it was like so funny you know um be graceful in movement and action right that can be you know if if someone is pushing us right uh think about that like this this um person here right they're a warrior and that reminds me of the um 
the Z lot in the movie The Chosen, right? So this guy trained for, I think they said decades, you know, to be able to do that, move with grace, grace, be graceful in movement and action. Okay, what else do we have? Wise one, grow within your current situation. So this came up yesterday in a short, and then I followed it up with another video. And um, this morning, I was really holding to that myself, personally, right? Feeling that topsy-turvy thing of what, um, it's like, don't overcompensate, hold space for myself and others, right? Grow within the situation. Don't, like when you feel that, that desire to run away from a situation, run, get into the other room, just avoid it, you know, throw a fit, like you can do all these different things, but it's like just breathing in the situation and just holding your own. I mean, you know, it can be a challenge. It could be a challenge. <laughs> okay, so the next one is um, summer. Bask in the bask in joy and light, right? So again, like I said, uh, stepping away from a situation is different than running away from it, right? So holding the space for what's going on, moving through whatever it is in a moment, right? And then it's like, okay, now I'm stepping away. My mind is still holding its own. I'm not like totally flustered and totally mad and totally sad and all this. So stepping away and running away are two different things. So this is about stepping away into your joy, bask in joy and light. I know that this um, lighting, this camera is kind of um, not the greatest. I, I have a different light out here. My, um, my uh, connection for the ring light broke um, so I have to replace it so I just decided to bring this outside and not use the ring light but anyway the next one that we have here oh shield made and make plans and focus this came up yesterday as well right um okay so we have that repeating card and that's pretty that's that's like really good that two of these same cards come up. This speaks of when the energy is in, in the atmosphere, it is in the atmosphere, right? Um, it is really interesting if you watch other people or readings, you can see this kind of thing come up because that is the energy. Like energy attracts like energy. So I wanna tap into the drum here. Let's first of all see what that says. Um, there are three categories here. I just, I should have marked these, but I did not. Um, let's see. Hmm. Okay, the drum, the message for the drum is journey inwards to uncover insights and information that will be important for your path. Then follow the guidance, right? So this is not about running away. It's about going within. In shamanic traditions, in all four corners of the world, the drum is recognized as the main tool used by medicine men and women to direct their will and aid meditation. A drum beat can become hypnotic and send those listening into an altered state that can allow them to journey to the spiritual realms and meet their guides. When the drum card appears in a reading, there are opportunities for you to dream or to bring an inner vision into reality. You are in the extended messages that you are very connected to other worlds at this time. The wise and intelligence, I'm sorry, the wisdom and intelligence of the earth and her magic surrounds you. The drum, which echoes the sound of Mother Earth's heartbeat, has cleared the cobwebs and dust from your inner vision. What you have been in your dreams and inner vision is not imagination, but guidance. Particularly if it has been coming to you repeatedly or has the potential to become reality. Dreams come true. Know it and live it, right? So these, that's like synchronicities, right? So you're seeing it. It is, it is, um, it is there. Your, your energy 
it's in your energetic field okay so the next one the um, Shalom master let's see Shalom and master the message is slow and steady breathe and flow take a gentler approach right so um, to me this is the words of holding space okay the Shaolin master calls forth the ninja within the Shaolin medicine is about learning to adapt to a situation and to tap into the energy running through your body and pers uh, preserve it in order to release it at the right moment it also teaches subtlety because when you are too forceful, you will use too much energy. And that may not be supportive of what you are working on. The Sholin Master, like a monk, has respect for all things. He is disciplined and guided by his art. And he will never use it to impress the foolish or to appear stronger than someone who is threatening him. You too are being invited to remain graceful in your movement, choices, and actions. The extended message is, you are being guided to flow like water, blow like air, and connect with your purest intentions. Don't feel you need to rush ahead. A gentler approach will be more fruitful and rewarding. Move with subtlety and grace. Reach high, but also ask how you can move with the flow of your life rather than pushing against it. Do you have the capacity to refocus your gaze at this time? Can you slow down or take more time to soften and breathe? As you move forward, all of this will be incredibly beneficial for what happens next, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and read the wise one. Let me see, I think that is up here. Okay, the wise one's message is knuckle down, be reliable and committed. Be open to wisdom and insights from your elders. About this card, it says the wise one represents the wisest aspect of the goddess and crone. In paganism, the modern Wicca, the crone is the fear cast I'm sorry the fiercest <laughs> oh my god oh, can you tell I'm a little tired anyway the, the fiercest most psychic and most aware aspect of the goddess because she has been through many of life's challenges and overcomes many setbacks on this card the raven in her hands represents the capacity to overcome the darker times and to be reborn again and again so she helps you to tap into the wisdom to overcome whatever wisdom being the information stored in your soul. Sorry, I thought my phone was running out. Wisdom being the information stored in your soul rather than the knowledge acquired in this lifetime and to learn from the experience of your elders. The extended message is the wisdom of the wise one is based on something that the younger generation is often lacking commitment and reliability. When this card appears, you are being guided to continue working on your growth and expansion within your current situation. Be committed to your tasks and projects. It can be very easy to get bored or overwhelmed, but persevere. You are being reminded of how it feels to be let down and experience unreliability. And that is not who you were born to be. So keep working on what you are working on because it's going to be extremely beneficial for you in the long run. This is the, the vision I'm having is, you know, I've, you've seen movies, right? Where say teenagers are, you know, they're going to their grandparents and they're, or whatever, they go visit someone and they're way out in the middle of nowhere. And it basically, you know, through boredom, they start building up their character because, or through total lack of empathy, the grandparents are like, sorry, we don't have Wi-Fi around here, but that fence needs fixing, right? So they, you know what I mean? And so they're so bored, they're like, okay. But they start realizing that they were never given that, that trust at home. 
um, like, or they never took advantage of it, right? So maybe they were given it, but but it was like, you do everything, you take care of everything, you just do it, right? But the the on the reverse side, the grandparents like, and, and by the way, they might see that their grandparent is older and actually could use some help, and that the grandparent isn't so white knuckling that, oh, don't get hurt, oh, do this, because they're like, they've been through so much, they're like, you know what, you'll learn something. Just give it a whirl and see how you do. And so they build character, they build skills. There's all these things, right? So grow within your current situation, whatever that is that you are experiencing. Okay, the next one again was the summer card. And it, um, oh, here's the seasons, yeah, okay. So the summer says bask in joy and light. Rise up, open your wings and shine. Bring your projects and plans out into the light into manifestation. Summer has always been recognized as a time for joy, for going on adventures and making memories. Flowers are in full bloom, animals are enjoying freedom of the wild summer days and nights, and people are taking holidays, basking in the sunshine, and being lifted energetically by the light and its warmth. The extended message is this is the perfect opportunity for you to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Light has come to banish the darkness, Clarity is arriving to allowing you to know exactly where you are, are and how you can move forward. Angels and ancestors guides are encouraging you to enjoy this moment and to not rush forward because this is the time for pleasure, enjoyment and expansion. There is a great chance that you have extra energy, creativity and inspiration at this time. Notice what is coming to you as this as I'm sorry as it is inspiration directly from the divine. When the summer card arrives in the future position of a spread, or at least the last card in the reading, it can also indicate the coming summer will usher in an important energy with regards to your question or intentions. And here I just ask to be shown what would be helpful. Now this is the fourth card out of five, okay? And again, the shield maiden. Let's see. Hmm. Okay. The message is have a plan or a strategy in place before moving forward. So we're getting that a lot here. Hold your space, grow in your current situation, but you can make a plan. The Shield Maiden is a female knight in shining armor. In Viking traditions, women were seen as equal to men, and so joined them on their raids and fought with them in the battlefield. In this deck, the Shield Maiden brings a fiercely feminine energy, the power to be a warrior while retaining feminine sensitivity. She is ready to put her plan into action. She's ready to go into battle. Her medicine helps us move beyond the unsettled feelings when our plans start to take shape and follow through with our strategies in order to be where we want to be. Shield maidens work together in times gone by to create shield walls of protection. So she also shows us how to work with others in order to bring our plans into fruition. The extended message is to take some time to assess what your next steps will be. All great warriors have a plan. You are a sensitive being and that if you are not prepared for the tasks you are taking on, you could end up feeling exposed and helpless. The ancestor guide that is coming to you now is a reminder that you have a warrior's heart and that you have it within you. Did you hear that, I hope? That you have, like, you have it within you to be more prepared and focused than you have been recently. So have a strategy in place and then let your guide support you as you move forward, okay? Um, I think what I'm gonna do is tap into these life changes cards because yeah, there's stuff going on and this can be related to your life choices. Okay. All right, what would you like to show us here for the collective regarding life, cho Ooh, life choices? Okay, so this jumped out it's dietary changes, and it falls under the drum. 
So right now, trust your intuition on what those changes need to be. It's purple and the, the uh, butterfly is white. Stand in your power with those changes, meaning if others are going, why are you doing that, right? Giving you a hard time in it. Just continue to walk in what works for you. Your body tells you what it needs, right? Whether that be exercise, a certain type of food, um, rest, right? But right now it is about dietary change. Catch that one? You can't miss that. That's what I'm talking about, right? Okay, what else do we have? Okay, we have changing your mind. So under the be graceful in movement and in action, maybe you haven't been, and you're trying to figure out how to do that. This is where you're being called to hold that space. Maybe you've been mad, maybe you've been frustrated, angry, walking away, running away, right? But right now, can you change your mind? You have a right to change your mind about any time, right? Any time. You have a right to change your mind. Just because you made a decision doesn't mean you have to hold that decision forever if it no longer aligns with who you are, where you are on your journey, right? Okay, the next one we have is forgiveness. Right now, you are being called to have forgiveness in a situation, and this is about the growing in your current situation, right? So your current situation may simply be calling for forgiveness of yourself and or others, right? Okay, the next one is join in. This is under summer. Bask in joy and light, right? So it's saying, have some fun, right? Have some fun. What brings light into your life? And try to lean into that for a while, right? Um, whatever that is. Okay, the next one we have here is grief work. Okay, so we have the make plans and focus. Now, grief work, I'm going to read this one because this can actually be about counseling others who are experiencing grief, okay? It says, the card signals that your heart needs some healing from one or more losses, right? That's, you could have a shield up around your heart, right? She's holding that shield. There is grief work to be done as a way of moving forward with your life. Already, you can think of how this specifically applies to you. Unhealed grief is compounded by each subsequent loss. Although it's uncomfortable to mourn and to cry, sometimes this is the only path to healing, right? So we have to clear it out of us. Think of like when you have a cold and, and your nose is clogged up, right? It's kind of like our chakras, they get blocked up. Our heart can blo you know, block up. We want to heal that. We want to clear it out. And if it takes crying, if it takes... Whatever it takes to get it out of us, right? Um, the best way to, to heal with an experience, I'm sorry, that's, I need to go back. <laughs> so you might need to cry. Sometimes this is the only path to healing. That's why it's best to heal with an experienced grief counselor, grief support group, or trauma trained therapist. Loss is one of the more painful processes of change. Yet it can also help us develop compassion and more appreciation for life. Additional meanings are changes that feel like a loss. So that can be like a parent who has a child moving off, right? They're getting married, college, um, a breakup, right? Um, job loss, like you might be sad over, because sometimes people are, you know, in America so many times, it's like, that's the first question. What do you do? It's, you know, and people often define themselves by what they do for a career versus who they are at their essence, right? And so if you lose your job, people are like, who am I when I'm not this? And you're trying to figure it out, right? And you are, you are, you are loved wherever you're at, right? wherever you're at, whatever you're experiencing, whatever you're going through. And this is where you're being called to dig deep, to find out who you are when you are not your job. Like, that's like, who are you when you are not a parent? Who are you when you're not a friend, right? Um, and I, I'm not saying to not be a friend to people, but like, say you lose a friendship, right? Who are you when you're not that, right? What we perceive. Um, this could also be a card, a calling to be a grief counselor, performing a eulogy, or comforting, 
comforting a grief-stricken friend, right? So make plans and focus, okay? Um, this other deck I got, it looks just kind of fun. It's called the Wise and Witty Stress Solution Kit. So I'm just feeling like if I'm feeling this stuff today, um, others are. So let's just take out these cards and see what comes up for a stress solution. Would you like to show us that would be helpful for the collective today? Or relieving stress. Okay. So I, ha I have just do it. The number 44, um, 444 is protection, right? It really drives me crazy when people keep talking about what they're going to do, but they never do it. Then when asked about it, they blame someone or something else. You've heard them, haven't you? I should take a walk, but it looks like it might rain. Or somebody, someday I'll write my book, but everyone has grown up and I have nothing else to do after everyone's grown up, right? This is called a cop-out. Step out of the door and walk. Once you take the first steps, it will usually lead to more. Lying on the sofa or whining incessantly will get you nothing but a headache. And how true is that? Think about like just even going to work sometimes. Once you're out the door, you're fine, right? It's like the mustering it up, if, especially if it's a job you're just tired of going to, but you go, right? And it's like, once you're out the door, you're fine. So this is that encouragement of just do it. Um, stop treating your dream or your desires like they don't matter. This is encouraging you to treat them like they do because right? they matter to you. Have a zest for life. Here this gal's riding a moped. The number on it is 32, which adds up to five, which speaks of changes. Um, okay. It says, if you love to cook, you are aware of the term zest is something sharp and spicy, flavorful and bold with edge and power. Zest can make your mouth pucker and your heart race. Imagine then how it feels to have zest for life. Become spicy and adventurous. Add some excitement to your life before it becomes brittle and flat. No one wants to look or feel weathered and dry, right? So again, this correlates to that joy card. Um, this is You are being encouraged to get out and enjoy life. Right now, um, in the States, it is... Um, I think it's September 8th today, right? September 8th, 2023, right? So um, summer, you know, is winding down here. Or it might even be officially over. I'm not sure. But um, this is like just encourage and then make a plan. Instead of saying, oh, I'm going to sit inside all winter, what would you like to experience in the winter, right? Okay, I'm going to take another one. It says, think intelligently. 52. Okay, so this adds up to seven in the tarot deck. This is about many choices, right? It's incredibly important to live life with intelligence on a personal, social, and emotional level. We often forget that we need to review and perhaps exercise new ways of using our intelligence. I've encouraged my audience to think about what they are thinking about. Because it's too easy to get stuck in a rut with respect to the ways we see certain things or people in our lives. It becomes our story. Who knows? A relative you can't stand might become the best teacher you've ever had. Or perhaps a culture or a religion you find distasteful may actually possess some interesting facets that broaden your perspective. So try to become more diversified with your intelligence. It's truly good for the soul, right? So, um, you know, that to me, that is also about non-judgment, right? Um, because maybe we were raised a certain way and that's what we're used to and we don't like feeling off track. If someone tries to get us something that's different than in our comfort zone, this is what it's encouraging you to do. Kind of think broader, to think from a higher perspective, to see all angles of um, a situation, right? 
Anyway, so I think that that is it. I want to say thank you for joining me. I hope you have an amazing day, and I really hope you get out and enjoy that summer that you bask in the joy and light. All right, take care.